Greetings. I came across this boat that's up for sale, and I've noticed it in the marina for quite some time. Uh, it, it's right now up on Boat Trader. You might be able to find it on Yacht World fairly soon. But I noticed about this boat was the bright work on it. And, you know, it's a wooden, old wooden boat, so it kind of caught my attention. Always wanted to know a little bit about the backstory of this boat. And now I kind of have it, I guess. Uh, again, apparent is the bright work on this, and I uh, never had really met the owners of this boat, but I did talk to the craftsman that varnished this boat, and I would talk to him and watch him, probably spent a few hours or so trying to learn some of the tips and tricks that he had for varnishing this boat, and you could definitely see that it's one of the things that really pops out on this boat. So some of the backstory on this boat, it's a wooden boat built in Japan. It was started in 1958 and finished in 1963. And I guess a guy by the name of Ryan Berkeley was the original owner and sailed it in a lot of the Tokyo to Okinawa races. And I guess he was with the Air Force and such. He had this boat made. Eventually, it took, uh, he sailed it on a 57-day voyage to the U.S., where it ended up in San Diego, and the current owner, who have subsequently passed away, and hence why it's up for sale, uh, bought the boat. It was brought up here to, to Long Beach. So it's kind of uh, interesting in that sense, and I guess uh, it was uh, built from custom plans. It says it has inspired by Hershoff lines, but uh, my, my feeling is it's more a little bit more of the Alden uh, lines that we tend to see with this, and it says it follows Lloyd's rules. So it's a wooden boat. It's basically made out of hinoki wood, and for those of you who's not familiar with hinoki, it's a Japanese cypress, and it's very uh, rot resistant. It actually gets strengthens with age, and that's over. Uh, and it's used for a lot of temples and shrines in Japan, so it has a, a sacred quality to it. And that's uh, sheathed over teak and it also has teak decking and such so it tends to work out really good and i will say that this boat walk around this boat it's kind of built like a uh, a brick house and it feels really 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 tight and strong so that's always kind of neat and we always wondered about it if it was fiberglass or wood but uh, where the transom meets there's some joinery work there and subsequently yeah looking at the top here man you can look at the joinery on top and it's just a pretty amazing we always wondered what it looked like down below and since it's come up for sale i've been able to get down below and i'll show some video of that in just a little bit so you can look at it and definitely tell it's a cruising type of boat it's catch rigged um, it's fairly beamy for a boat of this vintage which is kind of neat cockpit is wonderful it's it's very accommodating very comfortable which definitely has a lot of cruising amenities to it more than say race amenities to it which i didn't check the sails on it but the things like the the running rigging looks functional standing rigging also looks functional though I didn't really check the chain plates and stuff. I think if you're going to do any hardcore racing or cruising, you'd really want to check that out and see uh, uh, how good it actually is and stuff. But I didn't notice anything that would be considered unusual for a boat of this vintage and some of the general upkeep that it, uh, it does have. You know, it's a little bit dated. I mean, that's one of the interesting things about it. Again, you look at things like the winches and stuff. There's, you know, not self-tailing winches and such. But there is a roller furling on front, so it's been upgraded. Walking around the decks, very spacious. You know, very easy to uh, walk around this boat. So, again, kind of uh, elating to that kind of cruising idea associated with it. So that was always kind of neat. And again, the bright work just really pops. And uh, for the future owner, it will take a special person to actually appreciate this type of boat. Yeah, it's going to take some upkeep with all this exposed wood that we see 
and but it's very very beautiful definitely one of the the prides of the marina i noticed that the hull is is very true and straight uh no dings in it so it's always very good another interesting kind of idea that there's a lot of bronze and stainless steel on this boat and they t tended to avoid aluminum of course aluminum wasn't so popular back in the late 50s and early 60s and, and i really wonder about the the builder of this boat who it was and some of his backstory and on that because i know that there's a big transition in the late 50s early 60s of moving a lot of boat building to places like say taiwan and hong kong which that was very popular in the 70s and 80s and so i thought wow this is kind of cool that it was actually built in japan Well, the top deck is in really kind of a neat condition, and it really kind of shows that. And we've kind of looked at that over the years. And uh, again, it was sitting on the gangway for a few years. And again, I never really met the owners until it came up for sale. And of course, uh, very spacious, very functional uh, top side, and you know, fairly nicely appointed for again a boat of this vintage. Of course, going down below, I was really curious about that. Again, notice you know, noting that more of the classic boats of subsequent you know 80s and early you know later vintage tend to have a lot more functional interior. But boy, it kind of reflected down below that the bright work down there is really really well good, and also because of the beam of the boat. I really surprised the settee area is is great it, it's spacious and very very functional not so tight like a lot of traditional cruising boats are and so that was kind of wild the nav station great functioning nav station probably the two most dated parts of this boat i would say are the head and the galley and the galley has you know one of these alcohol burning stoves on it really doesn't have any refrigeration but or ice boxes and such of course forward what we see is um, towards the balance is actually where the head's at and there's a small quarter berth up there so i'm not sure if it has a whole holding tank but i imagine it does um so it has a holding tank, maybe, definitely overboard uh, pumping and stuff. And again, small quarter berth or a workstation up there. Again, a lot of storage uh, on this boat. Again, I think that there's not a lot of inert cabinetry in the boat, but there's definitely a lot of room in the boat that's underutilized. Again, that tends to be another thing I see of boats of this vintage and such of course if we move towards the aft again we have the nav station we have uh the galley and behind that are two quarter berths and one's a little bit larger than the others but definitely very functional and accommodating set area was big enough that you could sleep on there so i would say it can accommodate maybe oh uh three or four people fairly comfortably especially if you're making long distance passages for two people it tends to work out i think Think fairly well but again it's kind of the idea that you have this classic vintage custom boat that nobody's going to have you're not going to see another boat like this in the marina and i'm sure it's going to get kind of confused for uh the classic aldens and stuff from even earlier vintages so it would definitely be a kind of a, a neat ride to have Overall, its tankages are somewhat standard. They're stainless steel tanks, so they claim. I didn't really inspect the tanks very much, but uh, it has like 120 gallons of water and 150 gallons of fuel. It does have an Isuzu diesel in it, which is functional. The boat has moved and such, and I haven't noted anything too unusual about that. Again, looking at some of the plumbing and such uh, in the in the hold and stuff um you know maybe a little bit dated but not not too bad i didn't nothing really kind of popped out again it's a little bit dated might need some updating and such same with the electronics electronics are of 1990s vintage and will probably need some updating but overall it looks in pretty neat condition uh for the quick look i gave around the boat but it, it's always neat seeing these great classic kind of wooden boats that are out there they're definitely becoming fewer and fewer and fewer to to find and actually see out there especially here on the west coast i don't know if it's anything different on the east coast but if you're looking for a unique boat 
it's in your budget you know you might want to consider this boat also if you want to kind of have a throwback to the days of classic uh boating and such this would definitely be a, a good possibility it is a, a neat and what i would kind of consider as a comfortable boat even though i haven't sailed or motored on it uh it just looks of of that type of pedigree and such to where it would be a, a good ride so i hope you enjoyed this kind of tour it's a neat unique boat that we see out there and uh, i just had to share it with you you folks so i i wish you guys you know fair winds and following seas and uh, have a great day and we'll catch you next time.